Good morning, uh, National Fire Chemistry. Thought I'd make another video for this week. It's slightly more personal than just uh, the slideshows. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about three uh, learning outcomes, I think. Number one is something called nuclide new notation. It sounds really fancy, it's just the way you write down uh, an atom symbol, that's all. So nuclide notation. I would like to talk to you about something called isotopes. And lastly, I would like to talk with a sort of more revision. Actually, one and three are pretty much mostly revisions, which is great. Um, three might not be. Depends on whether you were told about that in third year uh, or whether it was mentioned to you in passing. So let's do nuclide notation first. This is not going to be a long video. It's too nice a day. I want to get out and enjoy the sunshine. Um, so nuclide notation, what's that about? Well, a typical example of this would be, say, lithium, for example, a, in a box. There are um, two numbers that go with these boxes. I'm hoping this is revision from last year. There's a larger number, 7, in the case of lithium, and there's a smaller number, 3. Um, now, I am really hoping that you remember, if you don't, of course, it's not a problem, uh, we can learn it again. This is called the atomic number. The smaller one is called the atomic number, and it's basically in charge. It tells you which element you are dealing with. The third element the number three element in the entire universe is always lithium. It also tells us about the particles inside these atoms. It tells us the number of protons. So that means that every atom of lithium in the universe is going to have three protons. If it didn't have three protons, it would not be lithium. It would be something else. This number at the top, the larger number, is, I'm hoping, you're showing to me, called the mass number. And it tells you Basically, it's linked to the weight of uh, this particular element. How do they work out the mass number? Well, it's the number of protons plus neutrons. So, in this case, that means um, protons are 3, because it tells us that here. So, 3 plus um, equals 7. That's got to be 4. Another way of looking at it is you subtract 3 from 7 and it tells you how many neutrons you've got. Um, lastly, poor old electrons seem to have missed out on this party, don't they? But we told you, for a normal atom, then the electrons are equal to the protons. So in this case, 3, because there's 3 protons. And this is basically nuclide notation, sort of almost done, 90% done. There's just one tiny wee bit of polish we need to put on it. So let's have a look at my learning outcome number two. So this was learning outcome one, nuclide notation. Learning outcome two were things called isotopes. Um, now, if I'm going to, probably going to pause the video and go and get myself a periodic table print out. Just two seconds, please. <laughs> it's going to be one of these days for technology here. Uh, my black printer cartridge has just bunged up the print heads, so that's not going to happen. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's have a look at isotopes the, the old-fashioned way then. I just, well, let's stick with lithium. Um, I went and looked up the exact mass number of lithium. Um, because if you look up lithium, technically speaking, its numbers are 3 and 6.94. Now, some of you may have noticed that in the past, that these whole numbers weren't, uh, these mass numbers, apologies, weren't whole numbers, and said to the teacher, and the teacher probably said, eh, don't worry, just round it up to the nearest whole number. But if you think about it, wait a minute, I just said on the last sheet that that means there's three protons, and you're supposed to take that away from that. I don't think you can get 3.94 neutrons. What's going on there? That's not right. Um... So the simple answer to that is, this number here is an average. And it turns out that you can have like different versions of lithium atoms, which have got different numbers of neutrons. Um, I went and looked it up, and some common... See, that's the definition, by the way, of an isotope. So an isotope is an atom of the same element, so that identical numbers of protons different numbers of neutrons. I'm going to draw two isotopes here of lithium using our fancy dandy nuclide notation system here. OK, 
Okay, these are our two lithium isotopes. Um, what I'm going to do is, in blue here, I'm just going to write down the definition of an isotope, just so we don't forget it. An isotope is two atoms with the same number of protons That means, of course, they are the same element then, but they have different numbers of neutrons. So it turns out this number here is not fixed in stone, um, and we've got two different flavors, <laughs> two different flavors of lithium, two different isotopes here. Um, so they both have three protons. But if you have a look here, it's not going to strain your brain this time in the morning to figure out that this one here must have four neutrons. That's the difference here. Whereas this one here has got three neutrons. What difference does that make to the lithium atom? Does it still behave chemically the same way? It certainly, certainly does. Um, it can have an effect on whether the atom is radioactive or not, though. And that's something we're going to go on to look at. Uh, in this topic, folks, in National 5 Chemistry. We have a closer look at radiation. Um, but that's we're not going to get there yet. This is the first brand new concept, perhaps, of today. Because we'd come across this before. We'd come across the way that you lay this out before. We just didn't come across this isotope. So, two atoms of the same element, they have to be the same element because they've got the same number of protons. But what they can have is different numbers of neutrons. So, this guy here is calculated as an average. So this is actually an average mass number. The brighter of you, by the way, are going to shout at me and say, you've got that wrong, Baldy, or more politely, Mr. Baldy, because um, the average of 6 and 7 is 6.5, and not 6.94. Um, turns out that uh, that's because there is way more of this type of isotope of lithium floating about in the universe. It's quite cool, this isotope's nonsense. It's how we can actually tell things like the age of the planet. Some people from time to time will tell you the age of the planet isn't what scientists tell you it is. We can measure the age of the planet, it's really cool. We're about four and a half billion years old, this planet, Earth. Um, and this is how we do it. We do it to do with isotopes. It's, uh, it's too complex to talk about here, but if you're interested, feel free to go and look it up. So there's much more 7 than 6. So what we do is we calculate what's called a weighted average and we end up with 6.94. Um, for atoms, uh, let's pick a different isotope. Um, in fact, no, let's, let's... Are we happy with isotopes here? Let's move on to a third point. I don't want to talk too much in this video. I don't want to bore you. Um, the third point was uh, ions. So learning outcome number 3, an ion. What on earth is an ion? Very simple answer to that. It's an atom which has lost or gained some electrons. Why does it do that? Just because it feels like it? Nope, there's a very good answer to why an atom would lose or gain electrons. And I don't know if you knew this from third year or not. Um, but all atoms in the periodic table are desperate to have, they desperately want a full outer layer of electrons. That's their goal in life. Don't ask me why. Come back in sixth year and ask me why. But that's what the atoms want, a full outer layer of electrons. And they usually don't start that way. So they frequently lose or gain electrons to make sure they end up that way. And then once they've lost or gained, they're called an ion. Let's take an atom of <coughs> excuse me, let's take an atom of sodium over here. So let's have a sodium atom, Na. It's got eleven protons in its center, so that's eleven positives in its center, and it's going to start with eleven electrons, of course, because atoms, where they start, have the same number of electrons as protons. That's why they have no charge overall. Am I dropping a hint here? 2, 8, and 1. Remember that, by the way? The electrons stack up in the layers from the inside out. You can fit 2 in the first layer, 8 in the next, and then a maximum of 8 after that. So here's an atom of sodium, and over here, 
is an atom of chlorine. Chlorine has 17 protons in the centre, and it will have 17 electrons. They will be 2, 8, 7. Now, I told you these both atoms want a full layer. This sodium here, gain 7? Nah, let, you know what guys, let's just lose that one. Let's just delete that one entirely. So that one goes, and now, its outer layer becomes this one, and it's full up. Happy atom. Only it's no longer an atom, of course. Now, it's an ion, because it has lost an electron. I wonder where that electron could go. Hmm. Right next door to it was a chlorine atom. 287. I'm hoping you're shouting at the screen saying, look, you can take that electron, transfer it over to there, and it becomes 288. And now this one has a full outer layer as well. So this is now no longer an atom. This is an ion, because it's gained an electron. Brilliant. So what? Who cares? Well, let me just show you one more thing. This sodium atom started off as 11 protons. That's 11 positives, because that's the charge in a proton. And it started with 11 negatives. That was 11 electrons. So your maths hopefully tells you that overall that's nothing. However, that's not the situation anymore. Now, it's still got 11 protons. They never change. They can't change. Um, and now it's only got 10 negatives. So I'm hoping you realise that that means this sodium ion is going to have a charge of one positive. This chlorine atom started off as 17 positives, 17 negatives. Overall charge, nothing. That is not the case anymore. We've got 17 positives, we've got 18 negatives, so that is a charge of one neg negative. So this ion is a 1 minus ion, sodium is a 1 plus. Brilliant. Um, how do we write that in our nuclide notation things? There's a certain place that we can show this charge. So if we go back to sodium. Now the mass number sits up here if you want. We don't really care about this in this case. The atomic number sits down here. The charge goes up in this area here. If you imagine a wee like a superscript box. This is a charge of 1 plus now. And our chloride ion, you notice I've changed the ending by the way. I'm no longer calling it a chlorine atom, it's now a chloride ion, although this remains sodium. Um, Cl and 1 minus. They of course stick together, don't they? Because they're opposite charges, but we will come back to that later in the year. Once we're all back together in the classroom again, and things have become a bit more normal. So, a recap on today, guys. I wanted you to be aware of nuclide notation. Sorry about that, I'm reaching right across the camera like an amateur there. This was nuclide notation. This was just where we put the mass number, the atomic number. Very quick recap on what these numbers told you. The mass number is the protons plus the neutrons. The atomic number is just the protons. And in a normal atom, you notice they use that weasel word earlier on, normally. Uh, now we know that's all not always true. But in an atom to start with, the electrons and the protons are equal. We then went on to look at isotopes. It turns out that the same element can exist in like different flavours. Please don't use the word flavours, of course. The correct word is isotopes. Different forms. How are they different then if they're the same element? Well, they're different from the number of neutrons. Um... And this number here that you see in the periodic table is an average of all the different isotopes. By the way, a little peek into the real world, there's usually a lot more than just two. <laughs> I've just simplified it by picking two. You can have like a dozen different isotopes of the same element. Um, and option number three, or allowing outcome number three, sorry, was the existence of these. Hopefully you had heard of these before from third year. Um, but maybe a wee bit fuzzy on them, maybe never heard of them in your life. So it turns out that atoms desperately want a full outer layer of electrons. And one way they can do that, you notice I'm hinting again, one way they can do that is to lose or gain some electrons. And we had sodium 281, it lost that one. We had chlorine 288, oh sorry, 287, my apologies, it started as, it's become 288 because that got transferred over here. And now we have a sodium ion and a chloride ion, and that's what ions are. They're just atoms which have lost or gained some electrons in order to give them a full layer.
brilliant. Nearly done. And that's the end of my voice. There's just one more thing I wanted to show you, which is what happens if you have more than one electron in your outer layer. And also, we're just going to have a look at exactly why group 8 are so unreactive. I, maybe you've figured it out, of course. Group 8 elements already have a full outside layer of electrons. That's why they never react with anything. They're like, no, I'm okay like this, thank you. I don't want any more electrons, don't want any less. My outside layer is completely full up. That's why they're so unreactive. Chemistry fits together like that once you start to see the pictures. Um, now, what happens if you had magnesium, for example? Magnesium, number 12. I'm such a geek, I don't even need to go and look these atomic numbers up. So it's got 12 electrons, 2 and 8 and 2. So that's the electrons of magnesium. Um, let's say you've got a chlorine here. 2 and 8 and 7. Uh, well, we want to lose these two electrons, but this only wants to accept one. So let's chip off one electron here and turn that into 8. Excellent. Now we've got chloride, one minus ions. It says, no, thank you very much. I'm full up. But that's okay, because we don't have just one of them and one of them. We've got billions of them all mixed together. So we just pull in a separate chloride here. Two, eight, seven. Chip that one off there, pop it onto there, and we end up with another chloride, one minus. And this, I'm hoping you can shout at the screen. Do you want to take a go at working out what the charge on it is before I say anything? I'll tell you what, I'll shut up and just write the numbers down. So we've got Mg2 plus, and we've got chloride 1 minus chloride 1 minus. MgCl2, that's what you would have got if you'd done, you know, the valencies. Mg valency 2, chlorine valency 1. Swap them around, you get MgCl2. Look, here's why that works. How cool is that? La very last thing before you go, I'm hoping you realise that if you didn't realise it, you're seeing it now that the valency is the same as the size of the charge. Chlorine is in group 7, it has a valency 1, magnesium is in group 2, its valency is 2. So it turns out the valency is actually the number of electrons needed to be lost or gained to fill up the full outer layer. That's for this type of bond that you need. We'll come back to it in more detail another time. Thank you, folks. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to go away and set up an assignment for this. It's quite complex stuff, so the assignment's not going to be too heavy duty, hopefully. Thanks for listening.